My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. One of the most feared snakes in Utah is the rattlesnake. And I can understand where they're coming from, because their venom has the potential to kill a human being. But unfortunately, this has led people to be killing not just rattlesnakes, but also their close look-alike cousin, the Great Basin Gopher Snake. Reaching lengths of up to seven feet, this is the largest species of snake in the state of Utah. But don't let their intimidating appearance fool you, because if you've had some experience with them, you'd know that they can be some of the most pleasant snakes to get up close with. Check this out. This right here is the Great Basin Gopher Snake. The gopher snake is common actually around all the U.S. Right now, I am in Salt Lake County, Utah, and these guys are found throughout all of Utah. Basically, any county of Utah, you can find these snakes. This snake got its name mostly because of its region that it lives in, the Great Basin. I think they get the name gopher snake because they're just, just about big enough maybe to eat gophers. These snakes get very large. I mean, they're often seen at around three to four feet in length. This one, I'd say, is only about three feet, um, but they can grow to be about eight and a half feet. Yeah, big snakes. This is actually the biggest species of snake uh, that I could have come across here today. So this snake is often mistaken for rattlesnakes because of its coloration. It looks similar to a rattlesnake and it blends in really well, just like a rattlesnake. Um, and so their pattern often has people thinking it's a venomous snake and they try and kill it. So the purpose, of course, of this pattern, I don't think is to look like a rattlesnake at all. It's purely for camouflage. When it's just out on shorter grass, this snake can definitely be spotted. But if you're out and the grass is probably about a foot or taller, this snake curled up, you'll almost never see it. I mean, it's incredible how, how well they blend in uh, when they're just curled up where they know they should be. This is a diurnal species, but actually during the summer months, uh, it can get way too hot for these guys to be out. Around here during the summer, it gets you know between 90 and 100 degrees uh, up here in northern Utah. And so these guys actually start to switch over to more of a nocturnal lifestyle and actually start to come out at night when it's a bit cooler. And then they actually will sleep during the day. Uh, they hiss really loud, m more so than many other snakes. Uh, and so that gives them the name Blow Snake. And they also will strike out uh, if they feel threatened. And they have quite a range. They can strike out pretty far. Uh, and they have fairly good sized heads, so if you get bit, it'll draw some blood, but like I said earlier, it is non-venomous, so it is not some, it's not a bite that you need to worry about. This snake is one of the only snakes out here, other than rattlesnakes, that is large enough to eat large rodents. Uh, typically lizards are something that snakes around here will go after but this snake has adapted for a diet of rodents. So these guys typically eat mice, and they can even grow big enough to eat full-grown rats. I mean, they'll have no problem taking that down. Um, but unlike rattlesnakes, they have a bit of a harder time finding them because they don't have those heat-sensing pits. Uh, if you live near the mountains in the western United States, you're likely to see one of these. But it's not something you should be afraid of because, first of all, it's non-venomous, and despite that they can be defensive, they only are defensive because they are scared. And so if you leave the snake alone, they're not gonna try to strike out and bite. So does the Great Basin Gopher Snake make a good pet? Well, they actually do make fairly decent pets. The most closely related snake to this that you're gonna find in the pet trade is the bull snake. Close, very close relative. Uh, and they do make pre pretty good pets if they are raised in captivity. If you have a Great Basin Gopher Snake that is raised in captivity and is adapted for eating frozen thawed rodents, I strongly suggest this as your first pet snake. But if you want to know where to find the snake out in the wild, let me give you some tips. Specifically the Great Basin Gopher Snake, though it, it inhabits a wide variety of habitats, it often frequents under uh, irrigation covers, which is exactly where I found this guy. But if you don't find one under an irrigation cover, or there's none of those around, you can find them just basking out near the base of rocks. Uh, you can find them out on roads at night during the summer months. These guys feel very camouflaged in tall grass, uh, and so you might find one basking there. Good luck to you if you try to find one of these, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the Great Basin Gopher Snake. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. I always overlook this common snake, as I see many of them every year. But one shouldn't look past the wonderful features of even the Great Basin Gopher Snake, because they play an important role in Utah's ecosystem. And this has still been one of the only truly large snakes I ever regularly come across in the wild. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like. 
And if you want to learn more about this species, click the link down below where you'll find an extended version of this episode on Facebook. And if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe.